This just became obsolete because there's a new device that can read out all your input from keyboard and mouse in Space Engineers. So let me introduce the Infinity Controller right after the intro. Now you might ask, what does this weird looking device do? Give me a second to explain and you will see it's not very complicated. Technically, it uses functional blocks that do react in any kind from your input devices like your keyboard, mouse or even gamepad if you are playing Space Engineers on console. It recognizes these reactions and gives you the possibility to let any other functional block react to that wasn't meant to do so. Let's demonstrate that with the WASD part of the controller. The red check lights are representative for any functional blocks that usually do not react to the shown inputs. And yes, this works vanilla and without scripts. Now, before we get into how it works, let's take a look at the other functions. There is an actual click trigger too. This one takes the most space and is the main reason for the size of the whole device. Due to the mechanics behind this, there is a bit of an input lag, but at least there is a reliable readout happening. The third variant of input this can handle is the mouse movement. In this current version it can't differentiate between different mouse speeds, but for some stuff like working trim and control flaps of wings for example, this already works good enough. And to repeat that, all this is vanilla, it doesn't use any script and it does work the same with the gamepad on console, without any extra configuration. Now the big question is, how does it work? To understand that, we need some basic knowledge about how event controllers work. Basically, they are the same as sensors, but instead of setting up a sensor field to get triggered from objects, an event controller does have a list of events to choose from. This list contains several situations, variants of outputs and other conditions. After we selected one, there is a second list below that shows matching blocks that are connected to this event block. Also, we need a threshold for this condition to trigger the event. And we can choose if it's triggered below or above this threshold. Now, if clicking on Select Actions, we see the same two boxes to put the triggered functions in as we know it from the sensors. The first is for condition is given and the second is for if not. Now, the key for our input converter to work is to find the right functional blocks and conditions from this list to trigger the event with the inputs we want to have. To make all the shown functions work, we need multiple techniques of input mechanics. The simplest variant of triggering the event block is the part for W, A, S, D, space and C. For these, it just needs a thruster for each of the six directions that are controlled with the six keys. With these thrusters, we already can set up an event block for each of the keys. Each of the six event blocks registers the activity of one thruster. For the actions, we set what we want to have executed when pressing the key, and if necessary, the stop for it when the key gets released. Now, if we want multiple functions to be triggered from a single input, we can group them if it's just about turning parts on and off, or we use two additional timer blocks as relays. One is to trigger the functions and the other to stop them when the key is released. Let's see how the click converter works. Again, this uses an event controller and two optional timer blocks. But to get some input for the event controller is way more difficult. Theoretically, there is no block with an action from a mouse click that does have a readable output for the event controller. But we can bypass that. One thing that does give a mechanical reaction on clicks is the grinder block. But as already noted, this is not usable. Something that can be used in the event controller is the integrity of functional blocks like these thrusters on a subgrid. So with the grinder we can change the integrity on click and this causes the wanted trigger. But this needs a permanent reset to not grind down the thrusters until nothing is left of them. That's why the conveying sends the grinded materials to the welder on the other side, which automatically resets the integrity for a new trigger interval. Now we do have a permanent click trigger loop. 
Now what about the mouse movement? Basically this works by misusing the custom turret parts to trigger sensors. It uses a custom turret block and an elevation rotor with limited rotation to 5 degrees in both directions. Two more rotors are set to 0 degrees in one and 5 degrees limit in the other direction. Each one of them is to reset the rotation of the elevation rotor from one direction. Two flags on the axis of this rotor alignment do trigger one of two sensors. So one is recognizing forward movement and the other is for backward. For left and right movement it is pretty much the same but with the azimuth rotor and a vertical arrangement. The reset of the rotor positions doesn't work perfectly fine in all situations due to the limitations of the game's physics. But it does the job good enough for some additional decorative effects that work with the movement of a ship, like throttle or trim flaps on wings. So this is the three functions of this device. But what can we use it for? Here is an example. This is a spheric gravity drive and pretty much the simplest variant of gravity drive devices. It uses a spheric gravity generator to push or pull artificial masses. With the right alignment, setup and controls to turn the masses on and off, it can be used to let non-static grids move. And in zero gravity this can be a full replacement for thrusters, an energy saving secondary propulsion or an extra boost if combined with conventional thrusters. And in combination with the WASD module of the Infinity controller, this perfectly behaves like any other vanilla ship, including fully functional auto dampeners. This also works over subgrids without using any script. Depending on the ship's size and expectations about maneuverability, this can save PCU, weight, block count and energy. And by far that's not all the controller can be used for. If the event controllers are used to turn on and off some preset thruster overrides, it can be used as a replacement for subgrid control scripts too. Now that's pretty much it about it from my side. And the ideas what else to do with all this is up to you. But let me know about it in the comments or visit me on my Discord server that is linked in the description down below. And don't forget to support this channel with your like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.